So hi and welcome! I am so glad that you decided to join the course, we are starting right away. The first lesson will be a little theoretical, in which we will understand what is WordPress in general. So back in 2003, WordPress CMS, which belongs to a company called Automatic, was presented to the world. It is an open code platform, which basically means that the whole code that a system is built with and is written in a programming language named PHP is open for anyone. So whoever knows how to code with PHP can easily make changes to the code and that is the biggest advantage of this platform compared to other platforms that use closed code. Since the code is open, it means that you can choose any programmer who knows PHP and they will be able to do magic with your website and turn it into anything you want, depending on their set of skills, of course. At the beginning, WordPress was presented as a closed CMS. CMS, by the way, stands for Content Management System. So in the beginning, it was offered only as a blogging platform, just like Blogger, if you know it, or Blogspot. You could sign up for free at wordpress.com, which is still available to this day, by the way, and you could start your own blog and write your content there. But wordpress.com is not what we are here for, because it gives you a very limited edition of WordPress as a CMS, in which you cannot really enjoy the freedom that an open code has to offer, and it's not really your own website. When talking about building a WordPress website, it means that you will install the standalone version of WordPress on your own hosting server. We will talk about it in the next lesson. And then you can do anything you want with it. On wordpress.org, you can download the full standalone version of WordPress and then you can install the files on your own hosting. These days, though, you don't even have to do this, as in most hosting companies, you can install WordPress within a few clicks and start enjoying all of its features quickly and easily. So from now on, we completely forget about WordPress.com and we only talk about WordPress as an independent, standalone platform which we will install on our own hosting service. As I said before, we will get to the practical side of it in the next lesson. And don't worry, it is very straightforward. You don't have to be a programmer or have any prior experience with the website building in order to install WordPress or sign up for a hosting provider. So WordPress includes two main features. The first one is themes and the second one is plugins. A WordPress theme constitutes the design basis of your website. Every WordPress website has a theme and each theme has its own design elements and settings. There are many free themes out there which you can use and there are also many premium themes which you need to pay for and usually it's something between 50 to 150 US dollars. You can find and install free WordPress themes from the official WordPress repository or you can find a premium thing that you like and you will have to install it by uploading the theme file to your website. The themes are built by programmers and they usually include the color settings of your website and the font settings and the menu locations and the widget locations and basically the theme is in charge of the look and feel of various parts of your website like the header which is the top area of the website and the bottom area which is called footer and the theme also includes the look and feel of a single post or page on your website which is called single and the archive page which shows a list of posts that you published and is simply called archive. Other than themes, which are related to the design, we can also install plugins on our website. When we install a fresh WordPress version on our website, other than writing content and designing it in a very basic way, we cannot do much more. And that is where the plugins come in handy, as they help us expanding the system capabilities. For example, if you want to add forms to your website, such as a contact form, you will have to install a specific forms plugin. If you want to turn your website into an e-commerce shop, there are specific plugins for that too. 
If you want to add a discussion board, there is a forums plugin that you have to install. Just like themes, there are many free plugins out there which you can install through the official WordPress repository. And also there are premium plugins which you can buy and upload to your website. You may already have heard about Elementor in the past, which is a very popular WordPress plugin. This plugin comes in two versions, a free one, which you can install through the WordPress repository, and also a premium plugin, which is called Elementor Pro. And you can buy it and install it in your website alongside with the free version of Elementor, and it opens more options for you. We are almost at the end of the first lesson, and I just want to recap some basic concepts that we discussed in the past few minutes. So we talked about WordPress.com, which is a closed blogging platform and is not what we need to use in order to build an independent website. To build our own website, we will use the standalone version of WordPress, which everything related to it is under WordPress.org. We also talked about WordPress themes, which are in charge of the visual side of our website. And as part of that, we also talked about the different areas that structure a WordPress website, which are the header, the top area, where we will usually put our logo and the navigation bar and maybe links to social media and our phone number. We also talked about the footer, which is the bottom part of the website, uh, where we also usually show different basic information. In most websites, we will see that the header and the footer are shown throughout all the pages of the website. Another part of the theme is single, which in WordPress represents the layout of a single post or page, and the archive, which shows a list of our latest posts or posts that we put under specific categories. And the last thing that we talked about are the plugins, which expand the basic WordPress capabilities. And that is it for the first lesson. In the next one, we will learn how to actually install WordPress on our own hosting so we can start working with it. So now that we know the basic terms of the system, in this lesson, we will learn how to get to a point where we have a live website with WordPress installed on it. Our primary website will obviously be pretty empty from content and design, and it will be very basic. But you have to start from something, and in this lesson, we will learn all of the first steps. So, in order to have a WordPress website, we need to start with the following three steps. Sign up for a hosting package. Register a domain name. A domain name is the URL of the website and of course, install WordPress. We will start now with the first step, which is hosting. Just like you have a computer, which holds all of your files and folders and data, this is how the hosting service works. We buy a hosting space in which we will put all of the files, the folders and the data that we want to show on our website, and the hosting provider knows how to show it to our audience under our domain name all around the world. The prices of hosting plans can start anywhere from $4 a month to $20, $30 and sometimes even more. And usually, if you choose to pay for a whole year in advance, and not only on a monthly basis, you will get a certain discount. The next step would be to register a domain name, which is what people have to type in their browser in order to get to our website, like google.com or facebook.com. Domain names are charged annually, and most domains cost somewhere between $10 to $18 for one year. Once we have a hosting package and a domain name, we need to connect between them, so the information on our hosting server will be shown under our domain name. I'm sure that at this point you might think that this sounds too technical or too complicated, but I will show you in a minute how to buy a hosting package and a domain name together very easily and you will see how simple it is. SiteGround is a very popular and known hosting company and from time to time they offer good deals for new customers. 
we will learn how to sign up to their plan, but of course you're free to use any other hosting provider out there. I chose to show you how to work with SiteGround because I work with them and I have a good experience with them so far and their hosting is fast and reliable. You can go to bit.ly forward slash sgpromos and it will get you to their most updated page of their current discounts, so you will not miss the best offers that they have right now. On this page, we will go to Get Started, and here we will choose this startup package. As of today, you can see that they have a $6.99 a month deal, and it is only offered for new customers. Once the initial period of your hosting will end, you will have to pay the regular monthly price, which is $14.99. This plan will let you build a website under one domain, and it will give you 10 gigabytes of hosting, which is more than enough for the average website. Click on Get Plan, and now we can register a domain name as well. If you have not purchased one yet, you can do it right from here. Just type the domain name that you want. It should, of course, be something related to your niche or your own name if you want, uh, or the name of the blog that you want to open. I will just write a random name here. And here you can choose if you want a .com domain or a .net one or .org, etc. We can see that SiteGround charges almost $16 for the domain and I want to remind you that it is a yearly price. It is quite the average price, but again, you can buy a domain anywhere else if you don't want to do it with SiteGround and then you will have to choose I already have a domain and type it here. The advantage that you will have if you will register a new domain here with the hosting package is that you will not have to later connect between them. It is not a complicated process, but if you're new to this whole thing, I definitely recommend that you buy the hosting and the domain together, like I show here. It will make this whole process quicker and easier. So after typing a domain, click on Proceed. The system will check if the domain is available, and if so, you will get to this page, where you will need to create an account and provide your personal details and, of course, pay. Let's see our options here. So first of all, depending on your target audience and their location, you can change the data center here. Just choose a location which is the closest to your audience. Now you can choose your payment period. The current promotion offers a price of $6.99 if you pay for a full year ahead. This is their best offer right now. It means that you will enjoy the reduced price for a whole year and only after 12 months you will start paying the regular price of $14.99 per month. There is also an option to only pay for one month, but then you will have to pay a higher price and if you choose to continue with SiteGround after that month, you will have to pay the regular price right away. You can also choose to pay now for the upcoming two or three years. Here they already checked for us the domain that we chose to register. Make sure that you spelled your domain name correctly because once you register a domain, it cannot be changed. You will have to buy a whole new domain if you made a spelling mistake. And they offer some more options to add to your package. We don't need any of them now, so just go on and confirm the terms and hit pay now. Once you're done and your account has been created, it's time to log in to your account and install WordPress. Go to SiteGround's homepage and click on Login. Sign in with the username and the password that you set when signing up to SiteGround and you will get to this page. Here, click on Websites and you will see your domain right here. Click on Site Tools. On this page, go to WordPress and Install and Manage. Choose WordPress and click on Select. Choose your domain, choose a language for your website. You can untick this right here. 
And now you will need to choose a username and a password that will be used whenever you log into your WordPress dashboard in order to work on your website. Also, type your email and click on Install. This might take a few seconds, and then you will see this page where you can instantly go to your admin panel and view your live website. Congratulations, you now have a website with WordPress installed in it. Now, whenever you want to work on your website, you don't need to go to SiteGround in order to get to your dashboard. All you have to do is type your website domain and add a forward slash and wp-admin at the end. This will get you to your WordPress login page and after typing the username and the password, you will be back inside the dashboard. If you want to view your live website, you can rather type your domain name in the browser or you can click here on your website name and then on visit site. To go back to the dashboard, click on the website name again and then on dashboard. And this is it for this lesson. I know that it was a long and very technical lesson, but you only need to do those steps once and from now on, we will only work with the dashboard. Welcome to lesson number three and welcome to WordPress. Now we can finally start working with this great platform, which is used in about a third of all the websites out there in the world. This is WordPress dashboard. And in this lesson, we will go through some of the tabs here and we will also talk about themes and plugins. The first tab here is the main dashboard tab. And here we have some shortcuts to other tabs in the dashboard. I never really use this tab, to be honest. It just serves as the dashboard homepage. And it also has some WordPress news and summary of different things related to your website. In the updates tab, we can see if there is any WordPress update available. Um, my WordPress installation is updated right now because it's new, but if there was a new version, I could automatically and easily click on the update button and it would be updated. If something is broken with your website core files, you can also reinstall your current WordPress version from here. I barely ever do this. Uh, I do check for WordPress updates from time to time and update to the latest versions. It is important to do so and it keeps you safe from some bugs and security holes that come up from time to time and the latest versions usually take care of them. So it's important to update your WordPress version. Sometimes WordPress releases a big version update with some major changes to the system. So you do want to stay updated. So I suggest you check for updates once in every few weeks. This is where we can also update new versions of the plugins that we use in our website, uh, as well as themes. We'll talk about both of them later. The posts area in WordPress is where we write all of our blog posts and they appear on our live site showing the latest article on top. In WordPress, you can sort your posts by topics, which are called categories, and also give each article tags, which are phrases that describe the content in it. We will talk in more detail about the blog in the next lesson. Under media, we have all of the files we ever uploaded to our website. If it's through the posts or the pages, or you can also upload files here by clicking on add new here or here. This will open the files on our computer and we can upload whatever we want. If you will click on pages on a new WordPress installation, you might see a sample page and a privacy policy page, which is set to draft, meaning it is not shown in the live website yet. You can click on preview and see how it looks like on your website. And the reason it is under draft is because you should first change the text to your own privacy policy and only then publish it. The pages on WordPress are different from posts. They are not shown in a chronological order 
And the purpose of them is to show informative text like uh, the About Us page and the Services page and the Contact form. And we will talk about posts and pages in the next lesson. Under Comments, we will find all of the comments that our readers write on our blog posts. We have a sample comment here, just to show you how it looks like when someone comments. And let's move on to Appearance. Here are the themes that are currently installed on our website. We can see that the active theme is called 2020, and if we will preview our website, the design that we see is the design of this active theme. I can go back and activate a different theme. And now, if I refresh the website, you can see that the design has changed. This is a pretty basic and clean theme. Let's go back and choose Add New. All of the themes you see here are themes that other people designed and uploaded to the official WordPress library. It means that those themes are approved by WordPress and you can see a preview here and decide if you want to use it and then install it. I will choose a theme from the list here and install it. Now I will activate it. And let's refresh the website. And here is the new theme I just activated. Other than the themes that we have here, there are many other themes out there that you can download and install not through the official library. Some are free and some are paid. Let's go to wpastra.com. Here we have a theme called Astra that a lot of people like to use. We can download the free version of Astra from here and we will get a zip file to save to our computer. You can see that Astra has to offer a pro version of its theme and it opens you some more advanced options. Another very popular theme is called Ocean WP. This is their website and just like Astra, it offers a free and a pro version. Now let's go back to our dashboard and click on Add New here. I can now search for Ocean WP and we will see that we can install the free version of the theme right from here as well. I want to show you how to install a standalone theme, not from this library. So I downloaded the Astra theme file to my computer and now I can click on Upload Theme. I will choose the Astra zip file from my computer, click on Install. And after a few minutes, I can activate it. Let's refresh the website. And here is the website under Astra's design. This theme is also quite minimal, but it has a lot of great options and settings which lets you design it very nicely. Each WordPress theme has its own specific design elements and options. They are usually set through the Customize button here. So, as you can see, we have quite a lot of options in Astra. We will not go over all of them in this tutorial, because that's not really the main goal of it, but let's see some of the options. Under Global, we have some more options. Here we can set the typography and choose the fonts that we want to use and their sizes. You have a lot of free Google fonts that you can choose from. And we can decide on the fonts for each heading. And for the main text. We can choose the colors of specific text on our website. And let's go back. Under container, we can choose the width of our website container the general layout and the layout of specific areas like the page layout and the blog layout and the archive layout. You can see that there is a little arrow right here and clicking on it will hide the customization window so you can see your changes as they look on your full website width. And another click on it will bring the window back.
So I will change my content width to 900 pixels, for example, and you will see that the whole content area is now thinner. I'll put it back at 1200 pixels. Let's go back and we have options for the buttons on our website. And let's go back and choose header, which is the top area of the website. Here under site identity, you can upload your logo. And here you can change the header layout. Just go over the options here and choose whatever you like. Here are some settings related to the website menu. And you can also set a transparent menu in Astra. Let's go back. You can also choose to show breadcrumbs on your website. They basically help the reader understand where he's at. So if I will turn one of those options on and go to the sample post, you can see the path here. So we've been at the home page and now we are at the sample page. Here in the blog tab, we can decide what we want to show on a blog archive page and on a single blog post. So if I don't want to show the featured image, I can hide it like this. And I can hide the title and the comment section and such. And we will have similar options on the archive tab. The sidebar is where we can show some content items which are called widgets. We will talk about the widgets later on. So we have some options about where to show the sidebar here. And we also have options for the footer area, as well as menus and widget settings, which we will also talk about later. And this is basically how you work with the customization options of your theme. Uh, you will see different options here for each theme that you will activate. Let's go back to the dashboard. By the way, you can get to the customization window from here as well. So as I said, we will talk about the widgets and the menus later on in the course, and you don't need to touch the other tabs here. Let's go to plugins. So we talked about the use of plugins in the first lesson, and here is where you install them. You might already have some plugins installed here, like Akismet and Hello Dolly. You can leave them here or delete them. I am not going to use them in this tutorial. So just like with themes, we can click on Add New and see the official WordPress library of plugins. Here you can find free plugins that are offered for general use and some of them include pro versions, which you will have to pay for and they will open some advanced features for you. So if I will search for Elementor, I will see the free version of it here, which I can install and activate. And if I will go to Elementor's official website, I can buy the pro version from here, and just like with themes, I will get a zip file which I can upload to the plugins area of my dashboard. The themes and the plugins have new versions coming out from time to time, and I want to show you how it looks like when there is a new version that you can update. So here is another website which has some new versions ready for me to update. If I will go to updates, I have some new plugin versions that I can update from here, but I can also do that through the plugins tab. And here is the update button. Let's continue. Under users, we can add more users to our system if we want to let other people write content and have access to the dashboard. Here we also can edit our personal profile page. There is a specific lesson talking about the users tab in this course, so we will get to this later on. Under tools, we don't really need to do anything usually. And under settings, we will go over some of the most important settings at the last lesson of the course. And that is it for this lesson. I will see you on the next one. Welcome to lesson number four. In this lesson, we will work with the pages and the post section. We will learn how to write content in WordPress and how the whole blog section is managed. Let's begin with the pages. 
go to Pages, All Pages. So we already saw that we have two pages that were created automatically when we installed WordPress. I will delete the sample page as I don't need it and I will click on Add New. I will give this page a title and in this field we write our content. WordPress works with a content editor called Gutenberg, which basically works with blocks. So if I want to add text, I can just click on the plus here and you will see some of the most popular blocks here. So I will choose paragraph and now I can just start typing my content. Now as I type, some more options will open up. For example, I can mark this text and make it bold or I can add a link to it like that. And we have some more design options here, but let's say that I finished writing this paragraph, so I will click on the plus again. And you can open from here the rest of the blocks, and you will see a very long list of content blocks that you can use. I will now choose image, and I can now upload an image from my computer. Let's say I want to add this one. And now I can play with it, like change its size by dragging those handles. I can cut it. I can change its alignment. I can add a link over it and more. And I can also add a description to the image. And let's add another block. This time I will choose video. I can add a link from a video on YouTube. And it will automatically be embedded on my page. Let's say that my page is ready. Of course, it's not making any sense, but I only want to show you how to add basic content. And once you're done with the content, click on publish here. And now we have some options showing up. Under visibility, I can choose to make this page private, in which case only me as the site administrator and other back-end users who I also gave some editor uh, roles uh, would be able to see it. Another option is to make this page password protected, and then I will add a password here. In this case, only those who would enter the correct password will be able to see the content. Here we can choose when we want to publish this page. You can publish it right away. This is the current date and time. Or you can choose any other date. If you will add a future date, the page will not be available until that date. Now click Publish again. And the page is now live. You can click on View page to view it on your live website. And here it is. If I want to go back and edit it, I can do it through here. You can click on this icon if you want to see the settings window. If you click on a block, you will see its specific settings here. So for example, those are the settings of the image block. And if I will click on the paragraph, I will have different options of this block here. Let's go back to the general settings of this page by clicking on Document. Here we can decide if we want to allow comments on this page. By default, comments in WordPress are turned off for pages and turned on on posts. That is because usually you don't really need comments on an About page or on your Services page but you do usually want to hear what your readers have to say on an article that you publish. So if you decide that you do want to show comments on this page, you can turn it on from here. And here we have some settings related to the Astra theme that is activated on my website. 
And again, those are settings that are specifically related to this page, so whatever you change here will only affect this page and not the whole website. The global settings are set through the customization button as we saw in the previous lesson. So here I can change the sidebar location and the page layout and disable some options like uh, hide the header and the title of the page and such. So let's update. Here is our new page. And of course, you should also edit the content of your privacy policy page if you need this kind of page on your website. It is not published yet, as you can see. So just go on and edit it. And once it's done, click on publish. I want to show you how to work with a different content editor if you don't really like the blocks idea. Uh, I know that there are many people who are not fans of Gutenberg. So I will show you how you can disable it and go back to the original content editor that WordPress used to have up to until a few years ago. Let's go to plugins, add new. Here we immediately see the classic editor plugin here, which means that it is very popular. Or if you don't see it, just type classic editor here and it will show up. I will install it and activate it. And now if I will go back to pages and edit one of the pages here, you will see a different kind of editor here, which is kind of similar to Microsoft Word if you are familiar with it. So instead of blocks, we now have all of the design options right here on top. So I can write some text and I can mark it. And I can change its alignment from here. I can also add a numbered list like this. Or I can add a bulleted list. And there are several editing tools here. You can click on this icon to open some more. And you can just decide which content editor is more comfortable for you. I will update. And let's move on to posts. So the post section in WordPress is where we write our articles, those that we will publish every few days, and then the older one will go down and the newest one will be shown on top. Here you will see that we have two additional columns here one for categories and one for tags. We have a sample post here, so let's view it on the website. And here it is. We also have this sample comment shown here. As you can see, like I explained before, the posts are automatically open for commenting, unlike the pages where the comments are closed by default. I will go back to the dashboard and I will delete the sample post. Now I will add a new post, just like in pages, I will give it a title and I will paste some dummy text here. And since I activated the classic editor, it is shown here, otherwise I would have the blocks editor here. So basically everything here is similar to the way that you write text like we did under pages. But here on the side we have some different options. First of all you can choose a post format. To be honest it's not something that I ever really use. I usually just leave it on the standard format. You can also sort posts by categories. So let's say that this website is talking about culture. So I can give this post a category. And if I still don't have it on the list here, I can just type it here under add new category. I will give it a name and add it. And it is now shown on the list here and it is already ticked for me. I will add some more categories, for example, movies and theater. 
but I will untick them since this post is talking only about music, which means that I only added those other categories to the general categories library. In addition to categories, you can give each post some tags, which are phrases that are related to the content and they are separated by commas. In older days, the tags were significant, but these days there are some SEO people who say that Google does not read them anymore, so it is not really important if you add them or if you don't add them. But I still like to use them, so I will add some tags. And since my fake article talks about Queen, I will add some tags related to it, like uh, Queen, of course, and Freddie Mercury, and Classic Rock, and such. You can be more specific about it, of course, with phrases that are used in your article. I will add them. And another thing that is used in posts is the featured image. Your featured image will usually be shown in the archive blog pages, which show a preview of the latest posts. So I will add a featured image. And also, you can choose where you want the text of this post to break, meaning where in the archive page it will show a read more tag. To do that, put your mouse exactly where you want the text to break and click on this icon. So after this whole text, the reader will have to click on read more in order to enter the full article. Let's publish. and view the post. Back at the dashboard, let's click on the Categories tab here. Now we will see that all of the categories that I added while writing the post are shown here, and I can also add more categories through here. So I will write TV shows, The slug is what's shown at the address bar. You can leave it empty and then it will take the name that you gave to the category and separate it with hyphens if it's more than one word. Or you can type the slug you want. Again, you cannot put spaces here, so separate words with hyphens. Let's add this category to the list. And you can also create a subcategory. So if I write here American TV shows, I can put it under the parent TV shows category. I will also add an international TV shows subcategory. And there it is. Now if I click on view under a category, an archive page will open with all of the posts that are under this category. Since I don't have any posts under this category yet, it's empty. But if I will view the music category, I now see the post that I wrote under it. And you can see that the content ends here, just where I put the read more tag. I can click on leave a comment and it will jump to the comments section where I can write a comment. Clicking on the category name will get me back to the category archive page with all of the posts that I wrote under this category. And here I can click on the author name and it will bring me to the author personal profile page, which is empty right now, but we will soon in this course see how to insert some content here. And this page also shows the author's posts. Let's move on to tags. And here we have all of the tags that I added to the posts. I never really use this tab. I usually just add different tags inside the posts and there is not much to do here on this page. Let's go back to posts. Here you can see a quick edit option. It's also available in the pages section. And this lets us save some time and edit some things quickly instead of having to enter the full post. You can change the categories here, you can change the publishing date and the option to comment and the status and such. If you set a post as sticky, it means that it will always show as the first post of an archive page. 
And once you're done, just hit update. Another important thing you should know about posts is that you can find all of the comments that your readers wrote here under comments. I don't have any comments right now because I just deleted the sample post which had the sample comment. So let me go back to my post and leave a comment real fast. And here you can approve or unapprove comments, or you can reply to comments, or you can edit them, or mark them as spam, or send them to the trash. I want to show you something else. I've added another post, and let's say that I put it under the wrong category. So as you already saw, I can quick edit it and change the category, and I will update. And you can also tick those boxes here. And this way I can quick edit many posts together. Now I will choose bulk actions and edit and apply. And now I can change the settings for all of those posts at once. So for example, I can change the category to many posts at once, or I can change the author name and the commenting options and the status, etc. It's very handy. I will update and the changes will take effect on all of the posts that I ticked. So now they all change to draft. I will get them back to a published status. And that is it. This is how the blog section in WordPress works. Welcome to lesson number five. In this lesson, we will learn how to work with WordPress menus system. I added some more blog posts just so we will have something to work with. I also changed the whole topic of my blog to photography. This is a topic that is closer to my heart. And I now have seven posts in total. I also changed my blog categories so they will fit a photography blog. I also added some more pages to my website. I now have a pricing page and a photography equipment page, and I added some dummy text in them. So in WordPress, the menu section is here under appearance. I don't have any menu yet, so I will create one by typing a name for my menu here. It doesn't really matter what you name your menu, since only you can see it, it is not shown on the website. And I will click on create menu. You can create as many menus as you want in WordPress. We now see our latest published pages here on the left and we can click on view all to see the full list of pages. I will start adding my pages to the menu. You can click here and change the name that will appear on the button. And I can also add specific blog posts to my menu. Here are all of the posts that I wrote. Under custom links, you can basically add any link that you want to your menu. For example, if I want to link to Google for some reason, I can type Google's address here and give the button a name. We will soon see what else we can do with the custom links. And under categories, we have the blog categories, which we can also add to the menu. I will add just one category for now. And once my menu is ready, I need to tell the system where I want to show it on the website. Each WordPress theme comes with specific menu locations. So what you see here under display location is what Astra theme created as menu locations. If you activate different theme, you will have different options here. So I will choose primary menu and save. Let's take a look at our website. And here is my newly created menu. As default, the homepage in WordPress shows the latest posts that we write in our blog. We will see in future lessons how to change the homepage. So now I can click on the menu items and see that they bring me to the correct pages. And here is the Google button 
which brings me to Google. And here I have the category and it shows the latest blog posts that I put under it. Let's go back to the menus in the dashboard and change it a little. First of all, I will delete the Google item since I don't want to link to Google. I will also remove this category from the menu just for now. I will bring it back in a little while. I want to show you a better way to link to your blog posts in the menu. Under custom links, I will add this symbol here in the URL. This will create an empty button, meaning it will not link anywhere. The reason that I do this is because I want this tab to open a sub-menu in which I will put all of my blog categories. So in the text I will type blog and add it to the menu. Now I will move to my categories list and I will choose all of them. Now I will add them to the menu and in order to create sub-items I can move them a little bit to the right under the blog item. This connects them to the blog button as sub-items. By the way, you can also move the items anywhere in the list to change the item's order. So let's save and refresh my website. And here is the updated menu with the changes that I've made. The blog button is not linking anywhere, instead it opens up a sub-menu with all of the categories. This is a convenient way for my readers to get to the articles and topics that they are interested in reading. Back at the dashboard, you can see that Astra lets us place a menu in the footer area. I will tick it and save, but now if I refresh the page, I still cannot see my menu in the footer. The reason for that is that even though I asked to show it under the menus section, I also need to specify in the theme settings that I want to show a menu in the footer area. And that is done, do you remember where? That's right, here under the customize button. And here we will go to footer and to footer bar. And now we see that this is the chosen layout and it currently shows a text section. I can add another section and set it to footer menu and save and close this window and the menu is now shown. To sum it up, in order to show the footer menu, I had to check the footer menu location under menus and also tell the theme under customization that I want to place a footer menu. It's important to understand that the way you build menus in WordPress is similar in every WordPress website, but the menu locations and the settings that I had to do under customize is different in each theme that you use in your website. So if you will use a different theme, you will see different menu locations and settings for it, but the way that you build the menu itself and add the items is the same. Welcome back! In this lesson we will talk about widgets. If we will take a look at our website, we will see the widgets right here in the sidebar. Widgets are small bits of content that are usually set to appear on specific places in the website, like in the sidebar, or in the footer, or in the header. So right now the widgets are set to appear on the sidebar, which is shown throughout the website pages. We have a search bar widget, this is recent posts widget and recent comments and an archive widget which is sorted by month and categories and meta. Just like the menus, the widgets locations in WordPress are also dependent on your current active theme. Let's go back to the customize area and here we have the widgets tab. Since we only have one widget area activated, it is the only one that is shown here and it's the main sidebar. I will open it and here are all the widgets that are now shown on the website. WordPress comes with a long list of widgets that you can use. You can click here to see them and you will find out that once you install some plugins they will also come with some specific widgets. So I will add a calendar widget and we can see that it's added at the end of the list here. This widget shows our posts in a calendar view. 
I can give this widget a title. And this is how you add widgets. If I go back and click on footer, you can see that Astra lets you add widgets to the footer area as well. It's not activated now, but if I click on this layout, you can now see four widget areas added to the footer. And now if I will go back to the widgets tab, I can add any widget that I want to each of these four footer areas. Let's save and close this and go back to the dashboard. You can get to the widgets area from the dashboard as well under appearance. And here are the sidebar widgets as well as the four footer widget areas. From here, I can choose the widgets that I want to show and decide in which widget area I want to display them. And I can also delete the ones that I don't want to show. By the way, if we will go back to customize, we have a sidebar tab here. And here we can choose where to show the sidebar. I can move it to the other side. Or I can turn it off completely. I can also choose to turn it off from the website in general, but turn it on only for pages or only for blog posts or only in archives. You can also determine its width. And that's it for the widgets. You can see that since I turn it off, it is not displayed and the page content is displayed across the entire page. So we're getting closer to the end of the course and at this stage, if you watched all of the previous lessons, you already have the basic knowledge that is needed in order to operate a WordPress website. In this upcoming lessons, we will learn about users, so you will see how you can add team members to your website and we will also learn about some important general settings that you should know in WordPress. So let's go to the users tab here. I obviously have only one user now, which is me as the site administrator. I can click here to edit my personal profile or edit it through the profile tab here. So now I can fill in my first and last name. I can choose a nickname and I can decide what name will be displayed on my public posts. I will write Maya from its WPTime.com as a nickname and I will display the nickname as the author name on my posts. And here you can change the email that is connected to your WordPress installation and also add a website URL if you want to show a different website on your profile page for some reason. Here I can add some information about myself and also a profile picture. You can see that in order to change your profile picture, you need to do it through a service called Gravatar, which stands for Global Avatar. So here you need to create a WordPress.com account and then create an avatar and connect it to your website. I personally find it a bit annoying and too much of a hassle for just a profile picture. So what I usually do is installing a plugin that lets me add a profile picture right from the dashboard. So let's go to plugins, add new, and here I will type profile picture. And there are a few plugins that you can use. I will install this one and activate it. And let's go back to users, profile. And now you can see down here that I can now upload a profile picture right from my computer without having to create a third party account. Under account management, you can change your dashboard password and 
If you logged into your dashboard from another device, you can disconnect it from here. Let's update. And now, when I will go back to my website, you can see that the author name has been changed here and clicking on it will bring me to my public profile with all the details I just filled in. Let's say that I want to have another person who will add content to my website. So I will add another user by clicking on Add New under Users. I will give him a username. The username cannot be changed, by the way. And I will fill in his details. I will make up a user called Daniel. Here you can tick to send the user a notification with his account details. And here I need to give this user a role. So by default we have five roles here. So a subscriber cannot really do anything on your website dashboard other than edit their own personal profile. A contributor can write content but cannot publish it. An author can write content and also publish it but cannot change content of other users. An editor can write and publish content as well as edit other users' content as well. And administrator is the highest level, which lets you basically do anything you want in the dashboard. So I will give Daniel an editor role and add him to the system. Now I will log in to Daniel's account just to show you what he can do. And as you can see, as an editor, Daniel can add posts and categories and tags, and also he can edit other users' content and delete it. And now I will change Daniel's role to author. And let's refresh his dashboard. And now other users' content is available for him to view, but he cannot edit it. He can still add new content and publish it though. And you can also see that the dashboard capabilities are also smaller as you get a lower role. I will change Daniel's role to contributor. And now I of course cannot change existing content and also when I add a content of my own, I cannot publish it. Only someone with a higher role can publish it. And as I mentioned before, a subscriber cannot do much other than editing their personal profile. It is the default user role in WordPress and it is given, for example, to mailing list subscribers that must be registered in order for the system to send them emails, but they don't really need to do anything on the website other than that. Let's view one of the articles. So now it has me as the author of it. But if I will edit the post, I can change the author name. You might not have this option open for you. And if you don't see it, just click here on screen options and tick the author box. Now I can change the author. Save it. And now if I refresh the page, the author name is changed and by clicking on the name I will get to Daniel's public profile. And that is it for the users part. We are heading towards the final lesson of the course. Let's see how to create a menu. As you can see here, this theme created for us a contact page and an about page. We can find them under pages. I will insert some text to the About page by clicking on Edit here and deleting this default content. I will not add a featured image as I will not show this page right on the home page. Usually in WordPress you only add featured images to posts, but in this tutorial we did it for some pages too, the pages that we chose as home page sections, so the front page will look nicer with the images. But on static pages, like the About page and Contact page, we don't really need a featured image. So after adding the content, I will update the page. We will work on the Contact page in a few minutes.
You can add as many new static pages as you like, depending on your needs. Let's see how to edit and create a menu. Go to Appearance, Menus. As you can see, WordPress created default menus for us, and we can tweak them or delete them here and create a new blank menu by clicking on Create a new menu. As you can see here, this is the social links menu you can find at the bottom of the website. To edit the items with your own social media links, simply click on each item and change the URL. This theme knows how to connect between the name of the social network to its icon. So by only entering the name of the platform, for example Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, etc., it will automatically put its logo and will link to the URL that you define here. You can also remove items by clicking on Remove. Here under URL, you need to put the address of your Facebook page, your YouTube channel and such, the page you want your surfers to reach once clicking on the icon. Under Email, change the address after Mail To. If you want to add more social media platforms, you can click here on Custom Links, add the name of the platform in link text and the URL here, and then click on Add to Menu. You can also change the order of the items simply by dragging them. Once done, click on Save Menu and you will see the changes at the bottom of your website. Now let's choose the other menu, which is called the top menu, and click Select. This is the top menu, which appears here. Just like in the other menu, WordPress already puts some items here. If you want, you can add any other page that you created by choosing it and adding it to the menu. I will add the blog page in order to show all the posts at once. If you click on Posts, you will see all your blog posts and you can add them as separate menu items as well. The Custom Links tab allows you to add any URL as a menu item and the Category tab allows you to add your post categories as individual menu items. This can be handy if you have many blog posts divided into different categories and instead of showing all of the articles at once, you can order them by category. Once done adding and editing menu items, click on Save Menu and you will see the changes on your website. By the way, if you click on Blog, you will see that the whole content of the post is shown. You can choose to only show a few lines if you want. To do that, edit the post. You can do it from here by clicking on Edit. Now put your cursor when you want the line to break and click on the icon which will add a read more button. Save the post and then go back to the blog page. Now you will see the opening content and not the whole post.